But I want to deal a lot today in the early part of this message with the exclusivity of the law. The exclusive law. Why did God give it? The pat answer, the basic answer, if you ask anybody in the church, and particularly the grace churches, people that are really concentrating on the grace of God, if you said to them, why did God give the law? Most people would say God gave the law to shut up your faith, to exhaust you on your performance until Jesus could come and set you free. Okay, not a bad answer at all. In fact, Paul said that our faith was shut up under the law until Christ came and that the, war, the law declares every man guilty and shuts our mouth before God. So that's pretty good, you know, pretty basic stuff. You got Romans, you got Galatians as your backing. But that's spiritual. Why do you even bother to give it in the natural? I mean, they needed a reason when he gave it to them, not just a, not just a futuristic Jesus. They needed a reason in the natural. So I, I, I say there's two things that God gave the law for. It's very specific causes. And when you get these in your mind that this is why God did it for them, it might help in your own heart why God gave it to Israel. The first reason I think that God gave the law to Israel was to hem Israel in. It was to box them in from everybody around them, to give them a national identity. The dietary laws, the sanitary laws, the sexual purity laws, the moral laws, it gave Israel an exclusive identity. They had an exclusive law that belonged to them, that didn't belong to everybody else. It made them special. They needed that in the middle of a world in which they were intruders, wandering in a wilderness. And the second reason was that whenever God gave Israel the law, it made them cohesive. It brought them together. You shared something. It, underneath the law, I shared something with Jeff that, that we, Jeff and I didn't share with somebody outside. And it brought us together. It made us brothers. It made us family. Even though we may not have the exact same heritage bloodline, it made us familiar. And so the law shut them off from their outside and the law made them together. Now, because of that, it had some specific causes. Dietary law, sexual purity laws. It kept them clean. They didn't, they didn't catch the foodborne illnesses that the, the Gentiles outside of them caught. They didn't catch sexually transmitted diseases that the Gentile nations outside of them caught. And God did the, a lot of this to keep them hemmed in so that they wouldn't become susceptible to all the outside attacks. Um, also, the, the cohesiveness. Uh, a, a good, maybe a modern understanding is that when you see a coach and the, and the basketball team's got a game and the coach says, I want all my players to wear a tie to school today. You know, the, the players, when they first start doing this, they go, I don't want to wear a tie. I'm going to look ridiculous. And he's, not, he's not trying to make you look ridiculous. He's trying to make you look familiar so that every basketball player feels like he has something that not everybody else has. And you walk into the hallway and you look up, there's a kid down the hall wearing a tie. That kid is going to be on the court with me tonight. We have something that makes us unique. We have something that makes us special. The law did that for Israel. It gave them cohesiveness. It gave them purpose. It gave them a design but they fell in love with the idea that they had it. And the problem they forgot was it wasn't permanent. It was supposed to be temporary until the prophet comes. Moses had prophesied in Genesis that when Shiloh comes, Shiloh means peace. When peace comes, the scepter will belong to him. Right now it belongs to Israel, but it'll belong to him. And Jesus came along as the prince of peace. So the fulfillment of that prophecy. So Israel kind of falls in love with that idea. But in the middle of all that, that's just geographical. That's just keep, keep us hemmed out from our neighbors. Keep us tight. Keep it in the family. It's kind of Israel. That's what the law did. Keep it in the family. But it also was so radically exclusive. I mean, the very nature of the law was so radically exclusive. I mean, if you were to ask a Jew, why can we eat cows but we can't eat lobster? There was a common reason. Because the lobster... I'm, do a little Hebrew study. This is what a rabbi would have told you. He is unusual. He uses feet in water. And you're not supposed to use feet in water. You're supposed to swim. And because he uses feet in the water, he's unclean. In other words, anything unusual was off limits. An animal had to split the hoof, but he also had to chew the cud. If he split the hoof and didn't chew the cud, he didn't qualify. He had to do both because it was unusual. Unusualness was considered wrong. And so thus the law was very exclusive. Now you read some of these things. Let me tell you, if you'll ever do a real case-by-case, verse-by-verse study of the law, you're going to get embarrassed. I mean, Because there's some stuff in the law that you're going to wonder, what in the world was God thinking when He did this? Now I want to be very careful at this point because I don't for a moment want you to think that I'm insinuating that the law was bad. Paul said it's just holy and good. And I don't want you to think that God was doing silly things. 
But the law was meant to hem them in. It was meant to make them tight. But it was also meant to do exactly what they wanted it to do. Israel asked for the law. They wanted to be like everybody else. And what everybody else had was a system by which the strong survive. Do good, get good. Do bad, get bad. That's how your friends at work operate. Where did they learn that? They already had that system. Israel wanted it to be theirs, but better. And so God gave them exactly what they want, which is why the law was actually a reflection of the attitudes of the people around them. I'll give you an example. And this is the kind of stuff that embarrasses Christians when they go back and read the law. Under the law, women, you had no rights. Under the law, a woman could not file for divorce. Her husband could beat her, cheat on her, She was not to file for divorce. In fact, they would not even allow it. She couldn't leave her husband. Paul mentioned that in Romans 7 when he's trying to tell you how bound you are to the law. He said, somebody's got to die. If you die, well, then that's not freedom. That's death. And he said, guess what? The law ain't ever dying. And you're the woman in this marriage. So you need somebody to die on your behalf because you can't divorce the law. That was Paul's illustration. The sexual impurity laws were bizarre, but it was so reflective of the society around them. I mean, I won't even go into the rape laws other than to say that as long as the guy had money and the girl wasn't married, it was cool. Now, again, not casting stones on the law. I want to show you why God did this. The exclusive law, it teared people off so that the law reflected the way men treat each other the exact same way the world does. And God said, you want to be blessed by that standard so that you only get good when you do good and you get bad when you do bad? You're really not asking for anything better than the world has, but I'm going to give it to you and it's going to exhaust you. It's going to wear you out the same way it wears them out, the same way it exhausts them. But it's reflective of the way man worships. It's reflective of the way man acts. It won't work for you. And this is the most important point I can make about the law. The law was not reflective of the holiness of God. We have been fed that lie for so long in the church where people would say, if you want to know how holy God is, just read the law. No, the law was not reflective of the holiness of God. Paul came along in Romans 3 and said, now the righteousness of God is revealed apart from the law. It is upon all who have faith in Jesus Christ. Righteousness of God has been revealed apart from the law. Why wasn't the righteousness of God just revealed in the law? Because the law couldn't reveal the righteousness of God. The law revealed what's wrong with man and his system. It's out of whack. Only the strong survive. You got a physical defect? Disqualified. You got the wrong skin color? Disqualified. You got the wrong heritage? Disqualified. Disqualifications all across the map. Just exactly like it would if you was a Roman. Exactly like it was if he was a Babylonian. Exactly like it was if he was a Gentile. And the law did nothing to elevate your status of righteousness. You could live it the best you could live it, and you would still fail in one form or the other. It was impossible for you to make it. Impossible. If you had a nocturnal emission, unclean. Ladies, once a month, unclean. You can't win. It was meant to show you that you can't win. And yet, this is how you want to establish your righteousness? is based upon your own purity, your own ability, and God was just leaving it there for over a thousand years as an albatross, a weight around the neck of people. And then came Jesus. And so the transition of the new covenant is to watch Jesus walk into the middle of this and then start releasing people from the guilt, the condemnation, and the burden. To watch Jesus redefine the Sabbath. To watch Jesus redefine cleanliness. To watch Jesus redefine health, wholeness, and healing. The redefinitions, not the fighting against the law, but the dig down into the spirit of where his father was.